Yes, sir. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, at the outset, I would like to thank my colleague, Dr. Amit Janu, and the uh, lung cancer update, Dr. Vijay Patil and Dr. Mahaprabhashi's team for giving me this opportunity to speak on this topic. Uh, I have clubbed up the two topics, which is how to assess response and practice update guidelines in lung cancer research. Uh, we'll start with the response assessment guidelines and the criteria. And before we move on to the response assessment, I'm just giving a brief overview of the staging algorithm, which includes PET C, CT plus minus MR imaging of the brain as PET is justified to detect unsuspected uh, uh, extrathoracic malignancies and uh, PET has the ability to direct the invasive technique which is the endobronchoscopy for the uh, nodal evaluation. The criteria for nodal evaluation as it is more than 10 mm in size or any PET avid nodes which should be assessed by EBUS and guided with FNA. If proven end to end the multimodality treatment is uh, uh, the, the choice of modality for treating these patients. And if it is not N2 or N3, then these patients stand up for surgical staging and further manage. For the advanced cases, uh, mostly they are either clinical M1 or clinically M1B. They either are proven with thoracosynthesis, pericardiosynthesis and thoracoscopy. If uh, proven to be stage 4 uh, disease, they are ma managed with either targeted therapy and if not, then the immunotherapy. Uh, similarly, uh, the uh, one uh, BC can be either solitary or multiple metastasis in the brain can be managed with surgery or if there are multiple metastasis, stereotactic radiotherapy visa be <coughs> uh, a whole brain RT would be a management of choice which is, which is also supplemented with the systemic therapy which is mostly targeted therapy. So uh, the reporting of these patients becomes very important. We use, you need to use a synoptic reporting format for these patients so that you have documented the disease so that it is helpful in further risk assessment of these patients. And a synoptic format not only helps into assessing the response in the guide as, as per the guidelines of resist, but also directs management and gives recommendation if the patient has had newer lesions or there are changes on the treatment scan. So what in a, a conventional cancer uh, treatment happens is you do the disease severity, to, you do the risk, uh, uh, risk of recurrence and apply resist at multiple stages to do the uh, assessment of the treatment and follow up the, these patients on surveillance for long term uh, outcomes. The conventional criteria used are the WHO criteria, but we can normally use what we can use in our practices is this 1.1. There are modifications in 1.1. So by the, we have moved from bi-dimensional uh, of a WHO criteria to a unidimensional, which is the longest dimension on an axial scan, which is a unit, unidirectional measurement on this. And as per resist, you can either have a complete response, which is very rarely to see. These kind of responses might be seen uh, on CD and uh, you might still be reporting a residual disease which might which would have been a complete FTG negative disease on an, uh, uh, a functional aging. So if you see a persistent scar or a fibrotic area, uh, you can label that this patient needs a uh, next follow-up with FTG pet CCD to uh, document functional response in this particular patient. Most of the times we either see a partial response or disease progression. Partial response when you see less than 30% decrease and 20% increase leads to disease progression. These changes are mo were mostly seen with uh, therapies such as cisplatinum, uh, cisplatinum or the platinum based therapies. They, uh, they are either cytotoxic or cytostatic. In the cytotoxic therapy, as we all know, that the tumor cells uh, are, are, uh, undergo necrosis and apoptosis. And there is there can be either increase or decrease in the tumor size. So hence, uh, the progression is detected by detected. The drug is uh, stopped and the second line therapy is started. So here, uh, the actual tumor response is based on the tumor cell death and the size of the tumor. However, in cytostatic therapies, the mechanism of action is to cause a st stability in the tumor progression. And what we are looking at is the duration of the response. Hence, the stable disease is included as a preferred category of response in this kind of in this category of antitumoral agents. So, uh, what we need to look in a patient who is undergoing cytostatic therapy is the duration of response. It becomes a challenging uh, aspect itself to use resist and resist uh, re repeatability is uh, quite uh, uh, variable. The intra-observer variation ranges in progressive disease up to 30% and intra-observer uh, variation in a progressive disease can range up to 10%. Uh, apart from this, how to measure the lesion is also a, a very uh, a not, not very clear topic and uh, as per the guidelines, the measurement of the solid component should quantify to be the key stage of the disease. The lipidic component which is predominantly seen in adenocarcinoma uh, does uh, predict the overall prognosis but should not be included in the T uh, stage measurement. 
you might see atypical responses with targeted therapies such as uh, gefitinib and other egfr uh, anti egfr therapies the tumor might undergo complete necrosis or it can undergo cystic cavitation and hence resist again becomes a challenging task to apply in this situation we resist would ask you to make ma measure the maximum uh, axial dimension which is actually the wall thickness of the tumor there so hence uh, is resist enough no it's not enough you can apply something called as age resist or cavitation attenuation ground glass opacity evaluation apart from resist so what you do is you look at the attenuation of the lesion you measure the thickness of the wall maximum thickness of the wall and also look at the uh, ground glass changes which were seen around the lesion if you assess these changes you can actually document the response better than resist in your clinical practice these molecular agents which are the uh, first generation second generation and uh, the anti antigenic therapies come with a lot of side effects and which include interstitial lung disease pneumothorax flare up and uh, uh, with, uh, especially with avastin you can see bronchopulmonary fistula and massive hemoptysis and tumor necrosis so uh, again in the follow up uh, try to apply the uh, the guideline uh, synoptic guideline and document any urgent finding if you have seen if you have seen any pulmonary embolus or a pneumothorax and then overall impression of the response should always be given with the recent upsurge of uh, usage of immunotherapy agents and the improvement of the, in the survival out, uh, out survival uh, in these patients uh, the immunotherapeutic agents become one of the uh, key uh, uh, treatment agents which are used in the practice and it's important for radiologists to know how treatment is uh, assessed in patients treated with immunotherapy so immunotherapy basically it, it's an antigen antibody mediated reaction and the ant tumoral antigens are represented and they are the antibodies are created against them and which are mediated and either through receptor blockade or receptor enhancement and led to increased tumor necrosis or apoptosis using the uh, Im immunity of the body so these tumoral agents actually are uh, anti tumoral uh, uh, drugs which leads to uh, uh, which leads to uh, uh, response something similar to cytotoxic agents so the durable stable response may be anti tumor activity and clinical response in immunotherapeutic agents usually manifest after conventional progressive disease and which is which can be uh, no which is already also known as pseudo progression so keep in mind pseudo progression is a common phenomenon with immunotherapeutic agents where you might see a certain increase in the size of the tumor which is actually due to the apparent size which with the increased inflammation and and uh, the uh, the tumoral environment has more of macrophages and the tumoral cell swelling has happened leading to pseudo progression so how to assess the immune response uh, as per the IRCC that is the related response criteria you have four categories of responses the category one has is the complete disappearance or mute no tumor mute new tumor category two is a long stable period of uh, uh, stable disease followed by eventual decline in the tumoral size category three is initial increase followed by a decrease this is a pseudo tumor a pseudo uh, tumor progression category and category 4 is appearance of new lesion and re regression of the newly appeared lesion so you have complete uh, uh, patient has no uh, no disease patient least tends to have a new lesion and that lesion again regresses in size this is category 4 very rarely seen so uh, the new terminology which is commonly heard in, in um, patients managed with immunotherapy is the progressive disease or unconfirmed pro progression any new, uh, disease progression uh, at the first onset should be labeled as unconfirmed progression which should be uh, confirmed after four weeks and if it is definitive progression then only should be labeled as confirmed uh, progressive disease otherwise if there is uh, no change in the size it should be labeled as stable disease if it has regressed it should be labeled as uh, a partial response and if it has progressed then as i said it should be confirmed progression so that leads to an, a question that is resist enough is resist is not enough in assessing uh, immune response assessment uh, for immunotherapy agents and hence there, there are guidelines which are specific to uh, assessment of tumor response that is the IRC, IRRC. In the IRRC, the major difference is reassess the tumor if you have seen tumoral progression and still continue the therapy and if there is any change then mention that and uh, uh, confirm the tumor progression vis-a-vis -a, -vis a uh, stable disease. So in melanomas, you if you are giving map, the, the imaging point lines can be 12, 16. 1624 however in LLC it is variable from nibble map pem map and if not specified such as double map in liver map you need to uh, do a response assessment at nine uh, nine weeks and then every six weeks in pembrolizumab map every nine weeks and in double map you should do at six weeks and then every six to twelve weeks 
So the category one response over here you see a lesion which is significant and there is a pet uptick. There is complete tumoral regression and there is some structural architectural distortion which is left in the area of the primary tumoral site. This uh, on the functional imaging is showing complete response and should, is a category one response. In the category two, uh, you see that there is uh, uh, overall there is progressive uh, stable disease and suddenly you see sclerosis. These changes are mostly the category two responses are mostly seen in bone lesions because they take longer duration to heal and uh, there because there, there needs to be uh, bone mineralization in these areas. Category three is the most challenging ones, which otherwise in the previous era were labeled as progressive disease led to discontinuation of immunotherapeutic agents. So in this case, you see that there is certain progression in the size of the tumor and however on the follow up scan you see that the tumor has also re again regressed. So this is a pseudo, uh, su this, at this stage you would label the pseudo progression and conf confirm at 4 to 8 weeks. Another example uh, where a liver lesion has progressed in size because of the increased inflammation of tumoral response and at the next uh, follow up uh, cycle there is response to therapy. Hence, pseudo progression should always be confirmed and only uh, labeled as progression if there is uh, a disease progression in the subsequent scan. So, pseudo progression is mediated either by the immune cell infiltration or the edema of the cells. Both of these two school of thoughts have led to increase in the uh, overall tumoral size, which is labeled as pseudo progression. So, at the time of pseudo progression, as said, uh, as per resist, you would stop the therapy, but as per the newer parent guidelines, that is the IRRC. You would still continue therapy and uh, do a repeat scan and check at uh, uh, second interval whether this is true progression or not. So this is an example uh, of a category uh, 4 uh, where there was no lesion. Suddenly you see a like, lytic lesion and that lytic lesion again shows a response to therapy. This is a category 4 response. At times you might see sudden changes. This patient uh, was uh, started on immunotherapy within 30 uh, 6 hours of starting the therapy. Patient landed up in the acute emergency. The scan showed increase in size. Further repeat scan at 4th day showed uh, increase in size and in 7th day again there was significant progression of the disease and on, the patient was put on steroids and this patient showed response and this was the response scan at the 4th week. So this is a syndrome which is called as hyperprogression syndrome which is seen in 0.6% of the patients who are treated with immunotherapy. These patients tend to come to uh, disease and are ag aggressively managed on steroid therapy however the outcomes are very poor in these patients. Other immune related adverse events you can see is the uh, autoimmune or inflammatory state that's colitis, hypophysitis, pancreatitis. You can even see permanent uh, hormonal disbalances such as thyroiditis and uh, pancreatitis which leads to thyroid imbalance uh, or uh, uh, pancreatic insufficiency. Uh, the commonest simple symptoms are seen in the first eight, eight weeks and dependent and PET helps better than CD in, in picking up the early and also in assessing the response to these uh, 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 adverse events. So this is an example of uh, Iplimumab uh, for patient who is treated for melanoma and you see there is uh, diffuse uptake in the colon. This is a case of uh, colitis uh, related to uh, immunotherapy and this patient showed response after corticosteroid therapy. This is a case of hypophysitis and patient had a permanent hypopituitary hypopituitism after uh, the hypophysitis because of the immunotherapeutic agent. An example of pancreatitis, there is diffuse in uptake in the pancreas. On the follow-up scan, patient, pancreas showed atrophic changes and this was a confirmed case of autoimmune related pancreatitis led to pancreatic insufficiency in the follow-up. Uh, and pneumonitis uh, have been documented, even splenic inflammation has been documented with these. Secondary sarcoidosis has been documented with immunotherapeutic agents. You would see nodular lesions with uh, uh, enlarged nodes. Apart from this, you can have uh, uh, cryptogenic organizing pneumonia and even uh, uh, NSAP and uh, pulmonary fibrosis associated with uh, uh, immunotherapeutic agents. Apart from this, uh, some targeted therapies such as ALK uh, uh, positive patients who are treated with allotinib might have generalized osteopenia and this usually tends to occur within 6 to 8 months of starting the therapy. As seen in this case, that there is air within the vertebral body and diffuse decrease in the uh, generalized general mineralization of the vertebral bodies. Immunotherapeutic agents are better assessed on uh, functional imaging as seen uh, and have shown to have but better correlation in outcomes if they are followed up with PET CCT and this is a case where before treatment and after treatment you can see there is sudden increase in the PET uptake however follow up scan at 12 weeks shows both the regression in the inflammation also the PET FTG uptake. So this helps in better predicting the response to immunotherapeutic agent. Even uh, some people have used CT perfusion imaging in uh, assessing response and reg regression in the overall perfusion. The size may not regress significantly, but regression, the perfusion values and the time to peak 
uh, have significant correlation with predicting outcomes to immunotherapeutic agents. Uh, we also have tried some uh, uh, role of AI in this uh, and uh, the uh, role of AI has shown that we, you can actually uh, through the heat maps segregate the patients who are actually responders versus non-responders and in our cluster the genomic features could actually pick up patients who had better outcomes uh, and there was a significant difference in the mean of these two groups with p-value of 0.003 in, uh, in the OS and 0.05 in the progression of the survival. We also tried to segregate patients uh, for uh, based on radiomics who were treated with the EGFR therapy and uh, uh, whether to uh, see whether Jeffmi was uh, working on these patients and patients were categorized, all the EGFR patients were categorized into responders versus uh, non-responders and uh, of the 998 features, 26 patients showed low survival, a cluster of low survival and again these features were found to be correlating with the other uh, features that were smoking and the gel. Apart from this, uh, uh, you can use uh, in the recent up updates and guidelines. I think Amit will be talking more in the AI. I will not uh, uh, discuss this, but uh, uh, radiomics and artificial intelligence can also be used for picking up the mutation status of the brain metastasis, whether ELK or uh, EJ for positive. And with that, I would like to conclude that uh, lung cancer management is a multidisciplinary effort with the help of radiation oncologists, medical oncologists, thoracic surgery, with the lung appropriate lung screening program, lung. Uh, smoking cessation program and chest radiology where radiologists play a key role in the management of these patients especially uh, recognition of the re re relevant radiological appearances of lung cancer with understanding of the appropriateness of staging and familiarity with potential imaging pitfalls is indispensable for management of these patients. Uh, thank you, Dr. Abhishek. Uh, I just have uh, one question. So, uh, you are in a uh, teaching institute and uh, what are the most common type of response errors uh, you uh, see uh, come across in the institutions like Tata Memorial Center? I think all our patients are mostly uh, stage 4 patients. There is a very mixed bag of uh, patients which we see. Patients treated with radiotherapy, uh, with uh, immunotherapy, uh, which I have not seen much of pseudo progression. The incidents in uh, in my practice would be I would I would have reported maybe two or three. The most common challenge you will face is that the pleural effusion or the newer nodules which are appearing. What to label them as? So there could be a reason that these patients are under, undergoing. Rebiopsy, changing the management of patients from second line to third line, and uh, even in brain. If you see there, is, there are new lesions, then you also again to see that uh, these patients should, uh, should be given uh, targeted therapies which have adequate uh, brain uh, permeability and they can show response to therapy. So, uh, thank you uh, so much Dr. Abhishek and it was a very wonderful to hear that uh, you have covered such a vast topic in short, short span of time. Thank you so much. Thanks.